Hello everyone. Welcome to USB Forensics and Pen Testing here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off in our last video. We're going to talk a little bit about USB descriptors and how they work in detail. And we're actually going to go through a little demo. Now, before we get started with that, I just wanted to very quickly bring back this USB connection slide and remind you of the 12 steps. Here are the 12 steps, what happens when you connect a device. And the places that are bolded, such as here, where you're requesting a device descriptor in order to get the packet size, and then here where you're learning capabilities by requesting configuration descriptors, etc. And then finally selecting a configuration. All of those involve descriptors. So let's go ahead and run through a demo. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load USB Mon. We learned about that before. So mod probe. USB mon and that should allow me to go ahead and monitor my different interfaces. All right, so I'm going to take a, a little basic thumb drive here again and I'm going to plug it in and first I'm going to do an LS USB and I see my three buses, as I've seen before. I plug in my device, run LSUSB again, and I should see my trusty SanDisk Cruiser Micro Flash device. Great. And it is listed as being on bus number one, looks like today. So. I'll go ahead and fire up Wireshark. A little warning in there. USB Mon 1 and start. And here I get a whole bunch of information that's coming through. And I will unplug my device. I will stop my capture and I'll restart it. And I'll once again plug in my thumb drive. It appears as though it's been assigned address 4. I'll stop this. And now let's have a look at those descriptors. All right, so once again, I'm going to use LSUSB. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to eliminate other devices. So I have a device two as well. And then I have device one, which is the root hub. We'll, we'll talk more about what a root hub means in the future. I know I say that a lot. And I apologize but that's just kind of the way it is with some of these things. So I'm going to go here in Wireshark and I'm going to say USB device address not equal to two. And then I'll scroll down to where I plugged in my device here we are and 
port was reset. It was cleared out. And here I'm asked device zero because I don't have an address yet. Please give me your device descriptor. And my device responds and says, this is me. I am a device descriptor. Again, length, type, USB 2. My device class is zero. We said in the last video that the device class of zero means I will tell you later what I am. Same thing with subclass and protocol. And my maximum packet size, by the way, is 64. My vendor is SanDisk. This is the ID assigned to them. And here's the product ID, which Wireshark is nice enough to decode for me. And here are the indexes into the string descriptors for manufacturer product and serial number. This device supports one configuration. Great, so now the host knows how to talk to this device. And it says, please reset. And now, once I've assigned an address of four to my device, the host says, destination four, please give me your device descriptor. And you might think, well, that's really strange. Why is it asking for that again? Well, that's just the way it works. So we have the same device descriptor repeated. And now it says, give me your configuration. Give me that header information. And here is my response. I am not self-powered. I don't have remote wake up. And I need, at most, 200 milliamps. If you expand this in Wireshark, you'll see the different bit fields being set. Hex 80 is what you have. So now it knows how much power is required. And it needs to get some more information. So it says, get that descriptor again. And you're thinking, well, what? wait a second. I just got that descriptor. What's up with this? Remember from our previous discussion that here, we have the total length for this descriptor. Remember, the configuration descriptor you can think of as a header. It tells you at a high level about the device, the different configurations it has. So in one particular configuration, it might need a certain amount of power. It might have another low power state. That could be a different configuration. You don't know how much configuration information there is there. In this case, there's 32 bytes. So you have to ask again, because now you know that there's possibly more to the story. So here I ask again, and that's sent. It's sent again. And once that's been sent, it asks for strings. It says, give me one of those strings. Well, which string is it? I would like string index zero. We said last time, what is index zero? That is a language descriptor. What do you think it's going to re reply with? Well, it's going to come back and it's going to say, well, Thanks for asking. I am, in fact, supporting United States English, hex 0409. So let's walk through this really quickly again. The device was asked for its device descriptor in order to get the max packet size. Then it was assigned an address. Then it was asked for that descriptor again. 
Then it was asked for the configuration descriptor in order to know things like how much power was required and how long the configuration information was. It then asked for that information again so that it could get the whole story. After requesting that for the second time, now the host is asking for certain things such as what language do you support? And now it wants another string. In this case, it says, I want string two. String two is the manufacturer, Cruiser Micro. Excuse me, actually it's the product ID in this case. I'm going to ask for another string, this time string three. String three is the manufacturer, SanDisk Corporation. I'm going to ask for yet another string, string three. Not sure why they would ask for that again. Oh, I think I might have made a mistake. I must have had my index wrong. And now it's getting the serial number, which is what this is right here. By the way, all mass storage devices are supposed to have a unique serial number. All right, finally, I can set the configuration. I can say, which configuration do I want? Well, there's only one possibility for this device, configuration one. So now the host says, please, can I use configuration one? and I get a response, and then more configuration occurs from there. And the stuff that happens after this point is actually specific to USB mass storage devices. And that's all we have time for in this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos and all the videos at Pentester Academy, tell a friend. Help us to make more and more of these awesome videos for you. See you next time.